Let's go to Dick Tracy for a moment. Oh, do we have to? <laughs> if you look at him, what's he doing up there? Tracy. <laughs> It'll get to be a noodle Every jot and tittle Add to the pot Soon you got the kid as well as the guru Mom! He does have tests, but he won't bring her out of there We gotta go in Go in? Give me that time to get Sam Okay, get your on You bring your... You clashed with Beatty, but did you not fully enjoy the work on the movie itself? <clears throat> Would you rather talk about Ghost? I feel like you'd rather me jump to something else. No, no. I, I, it's hard to define because I know you probably won't believe this, but I can be a little bit stubborn. I will not let Warren Beatty, despite his good looks, despite all that stuff, beat me. I will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. And you can knock me around, but I will come back and I will do a damn good job. And you cannot deny that. And if you want to deny that, bad on you. Did he deny your skill set? He was just such a manipulative child. And I would, we would work on, I, I loved working on Dick Tracy because it was an opportunity to, to have a deal with the incredible visual world of Dick Tracy. Yeah. And, he just didn't want me to succeed. And I was finally, I would say to him, Warren, you, you keep fussing with this one shot when we have 90 other shots. What's the shot? Uh, who knows? So he would, he was he meticulous? Say, hmm, I'm not sure. Well, are you going to final it or not final? And so, uh, don't want to. And I eventually I said to him, if you keep fussing with this one, you're taking away the time that we have to do these others. So get off your high horse, come down to reality, and let me and the other artists do our work. Eventually, Jeffrey Kassenberg got wind of what was going on, and he called Warren into his office or conference room and called me in as well. And Jeffrey Kassenberg, to his credit, said, Warren, we can't keep spending money on your wishes and your your inability to make a decision and wow. you have to give Harrison an opportunity to do his job. Leave good for Katzenberg. Number. Yeah, good for Katzenberg. And you know, I it wasn't me who went, you know, saying to the teacher, but it became I wasn't going to snitch on Warren Beatty. I was going to battle him to the end. And it worked. And suddenly, it was, it was, it was good. It was good. But then, that's not to bring up the Toro Storaro. Oh, do you have a Storaro story you want to share with us? I've got some good ones, too. 
Now, Vittorio, look, he's a he's Academy Award winner, great cinematographer. So who am I to say he's a little bit of an Italian diva? I remember um, Jerry Zeismer, the AT on Apocalypse Now, said that Storar would disappear into the jungle for like three days trying to work out a color combination or something like that. And (laughs) Coppola would. Right. I I still have somewhere all these, uh, you know, why is purple purple? Yeah, his crew also on Apocalypse, he said he'd show up and Coppola wouldn't be present, Storaro wouldn't be present, but he'd find the crew and be like, all right, look, we know this is the shot coming in here, so why don't we start getting the gear out of the truck? And and they'd be like, they'd be having coffee and be like, no, 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 my friend, we do not touch the gear until Vittorio tells us we may touch the gear. You know, we are not, we're not, we will not touch this. We will not touch the uh, the uh, the the camera track until uh, Vistorio tells us so. We will not, uh, you know. It's like they would not even take the initiative of setting something up, or you know, because I mean, a lot of times the the DP can say, "Look, I'm not going to be there at a certain time. Do this," and the crew does it. But no, not not Storaro's crew, and not on Apocalypse. Your road to redemption is paved with tombstones. No quarter, kill all. Masters. Go to no quarter, killallmasters.com. Rated R 